Hi all. So we will begin with a pipe that has some radius big R. And as we remember, the volume flow rate through the pipe will be equal to the conductance of the pipe times the pressure difference across it. Now, the real question that we have is for a given pipe, can we actually calculate this G? So we look at a side view pipe, so just this right here. What we know is that uh, we have a no-slip condition at the edges, so that means at big R, so once you're at big R, uh, the velocity is zero. So we know the velocity is zero on all the edges. And then the simplest function it can be in between is a parabola. So it doesn't quite look at here, but the biggest velocity will be in the center at little r equal to zero, so starting at center. Because in polar coordinates, r equals zero is the center, and as you get further out, r gets bigger. So what we can say is that the velocity profile is going to be proportional to the radius of the pipe squared. Uh, and if we look at the volume flow rate of the pipe, it's going to be the area of the pipe times the velocity that it's moving in there. So we can say that this is going to be roughly the area, which is pi big R squared, because that's the area. And if we make an over assumption so that it's R squared everywhere, it's going to be roughly, it's, it's still going to go as R squared, it's just going to be you know, different by a constant, but at the center, it's going to be big R squared. So then we're going to find that the volume flow rate is going to go as the radius of the pipe to the fourth. So uh, a different video that you can look at is a derivation of Poiseuille's law uh, that is in my YouTube videos. It'll show you how to do that entirely, but this is just to give you a conceptual idea. So the velocity profile, so the velocity at some point is be will be going as r squared. And the area also goes as r squared, so the volume flow rate will go as r to the fourth. And we find that the uh, conductance of the pipe will be equal to pi r to the fourth. So this is what we had already said, and then there are some constants here. So 8, eta, and l. So l is just the length of the pipe. So as we make the pipe longer, the conductance drops. So as you make the pipe longer, it's harder to get water through there. And eta is the viscosity. So if you have something that flows really easily, like water, this is going to be a small number, and this is going to increase the, the conductance of the pipe. However, if you have something like honey uh, or molasses that is very viscous, so it doesn't really want to move, then this is going to be a big number, and then the conductance will go down. So uh, this more or less is uh, Poiseuille's law that the volume flow rate for a pipe is going to be equal to pi r to the fourth over eight eta l times the pressure difference and then this is the conductance of the pipe. So this is the full Poiseuille's law. What this really says is that a small change in the radius is going to have a dramatic effect on the conductance. There's one more thing that we can look at. So for things like blood, which is a living fluid, we have something that's Murray's law. So if we have a pipe junction, so what you have is blood coming in, and then it breaks off and goes down there down there. And this we will say has a radius RP. It's going to be the parent. And this will be a radius of RD1. So it's daughter 1 and then this is RD2. What Murray's law says is that the cube of the parent radius is going to be equal to the sum of all the daughter radii. This is only 
for living fluids. So blood, and then this is also going to explain the, uh, the pattern that you see in leaves for uh, transporting liquids. So where this comes from is minimizing the amount of energy that is lost in terms of uh, not just the dissipation due to the fact that you have some fluid resistance, but also the cost that it's going to take to keep uh, producing new red bulls, red blood cells and things of that nature. So it's the metabolic cost uh, required to keep producing fluid.